Hello everyone, hello from Malaysia. Welcome to the ninth program of Biosafety and Biosecurity Month, October 2020. A month to raise biosafety and biosecurity awareness and thank you very much for your participation today. You have joined our webinar on the biosafety issues for research involving small insects and small animals, as well as the Libyan experience in biosafety and biosecurity training program. And we'll begin our program shortly. I'd like to kick off today's program by reminding you some of the housekeeping items I've seen on the screen. First of all, please turn off your microphone during the session and only unmute when you are required to speak. Please turn on your camera so that we can see one another. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to message us on the chat box. We will try our best to address your concerns. The chat box is also there for you to introduce yourself. Please give us your name and organization. Last but not least, no phone calls or disruption during the session. And note that this session will be recorded and live on YouTube, and the recording will be saved on our YouTube channel. An evaluation survey will appear at the end of our session. Please spend some time during it to provide your feedback as it will be really meaningful for us to improve our next session. And thank you very much for your attention. And once again, 
Welcome all to our ninth webinar organized by AIMS Institutional Biosafety Committee as part of October 2020 Biosafety and Biosecurity Month at AIMS University. My name is Fazla Safarudin. I am proud to tell you that I'm a final year biotechnology final year student at AIMS University and I'm absolutely honored to serve you as the MC for this webinar. If anyone has any issue with audio or video, please use the chat box and we will do our best to help you. Without further ado, let's begin the session. With a welcome note by AIMS IBC Chairman, Senior Associate Professor Dr. Subash about Biosafety and Biosecurity Month at AIMS University. Dr. Subash, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Pajla. Uh, very uh, good morning to all the participants. On behalf of AIMS, University, as well as on behalf of Institutional Biosafety Committee of AIMS University, I welcome you all in this webinar. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to join this webinar and uh, becoming a part of Biosafety and Biosecurity Month of the AIMS University. AIMS University is observing October 2020 as a Biosafety and Biosecurity Month. And the main aim of this Biosafety and Biosecurity Month is to uh, raise the Biosafety and Biosecurity awareness among our students, staff, all stakeholders, and associates of AIMS University. However, uh, all these webinars, uh, we made it open to everybody. So anybody who is having interest to learn more about biosafety and biosecurity can join us and we have many participants. I firmly believe that the 12 webinars and poster presentation competition which we have organized will help participants to raise their awareness about biosafety and biosecurity. So to uh, promote, uh, we have organized 12 webinars and poster presentation competition. So today's webinar session is webinar session number nine. And we have two speakers. Uh, one is from Malaysia and one is from Libya. And uh, I'm happy to inform you that we have more than 300 registered participants for this uh, Biosafety and Biosecurity Month webinar series organized by AMC University and uh, uh, I'm happy to inform you that uh, we have participants from 12 countries. We have participants from Algeria. We have participants from Australia, India, Indonesia, Japan, Libya, Malaysia, Nepal, Nigeria, Philippines, United States of America, as well as we have some participants from Vietnam. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, our senior management, senior management of AIMS University because uh, they are very, very supportive to uh, uh, this uh, uh, initiative to implement the Biosafety and Biosecurity Month because uh, it is uh, very important for AIMS University to ensure the safety of the students, staff, as well as stakeholders. So I'm very grateful to the uh, senior management of AIMS University for their full support. I want to uh, thank all members of uh, Institutional Vice Safety Committee of AIMS University for their uh, full cooperation and support to implement the different activities of Vice Safety and Vice Security Month at AIMS University. Today we have two speakers. One is uh, uh, Dr. Mustafa from uh, University Science Malaysia. Uh, which is, uh, I mean, uh, he's based on the Penang Island. And uh, we have another speaker from uh, Libya. So uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Mustafa, who is our first speaker, uh, for accepting the invitation and uh, becoming a part of our Biosafety and Biosecurity Month. I want to thank uh, our second speaker, Dr. Adele. Uh, he's from Libya. He's a uh, coordinator of uh, Biosafety and Biosecurity Network of Libya. Uh, I'm highly impressed because he's very, very committed. Uh, I want to tell you that it's uh, early morning, means it's a 4 a.m. in Libya now. 
so uh, you can say midnight so all people uh, there where he is might be in deep sleep so uh, dr adil uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us and uh, uh, thank you very much for accepting our invitation and uh, becoming a part of our bicycle and bicycleity month My i pleasure. want to thank i want to thank uh, uh, you are welcome dr adil uh, i want to thank uh, moderator of today's uh, today's uh, session of uh, our today's uh, moderator for this session is uh, senior uh, professor dr krishnan raja uh, i want to thank him for accepting the invitation and becoming a moderator of this session so uh, i just want to introduce uh, our moderator by highlighting some important points professor uh, krishnan uh, raja uh, he is a senior professor and uh, head of family medicine uh, pediatrics unit uh, in faculty of medicine at ames university uh, he is a co-chair and data and research subcommittee member of uh, national water Act, uh, activity safety council and uh, ministry of housing and uh, local government previously i mean he have a wonderful experience uh, previously he was uh, working with uh, university malaya which one is the oldest university in uh, malaysia so he was working with uh, university malaya and uh, rcsi uh, ucd malaysia it's it's a uh, uh, campus uh, medical uh, uh, penang medical college uh, uh, which is uh, uh, which is very popular in a uh, uh, northern part as well as peninsula malaysia the uh, he's also uh, having a wonderful experience because formerly he was a uh, uh, technical officer uh, to take care i mean uh, injury prevention uh, uh, he was having uh, that charge and uh, uh, world health organization western pacific regional office uh, uh, he was attached to uh, uh manila branch uh, during 2008 to 2012 uh formerly he was also a member of a uh, joint penang ethics committee and uh, world health organization western pacific regional office research committee so he is having a wonderful experience and uh, uh we'll uh, hear some insights from him uh he have a award uh which is uh, tun abdul razak research award it was given by academy of medicine of malaysia in 1994 and uh, he is uh, having a medal uh from uh, royal college of physicians london and academy of medicine for outstanding contribution to medicine in malaysia he received this medal in 1991 means 30 years ago so uh, you will get an idea how much experience he is having so uh, because of his experience and wide wisdom uh, i mean uh, i i highly appreciate uh, he is a moderator and uh, thank you uh, professor krishnan rajam for accepting our invitation and becoming part of uh, bicycle and bicyclity month webinar series last but not least i want to uh, thank our biotechnology student because uh, without their support and uh, without their involvement it would have been very difficult because our biotech students are very actively participated in this bicycle and bicyclity month activities and uh, because of uh, their help and voluntary work it's uh, relatively easy to implement bicycle and bicyclity month at mc university you might have seen uh, mc at the beginning so she is just a final year student of our uh, bsc degree program so uh, i want to thank uh, all biotechnology students for your valuable uh, uh, input and contribution so uh, once again i want to thank uh, all of you and uh, without further ado i request mc uh, fazila please lead the way thank you dr subhash for your welcoming remarks Now I request moderator of the webinar, Senior Professor Dr. Krishnan Rajam, to introduce the speakers and start the session. Over to you, Professor. Uh, thank you. 
MC and thank you, Dr. Subhash, for this introduction, kind introduction. Uh, as a pediatrician and a family medicine doctor, I'm impressed by the wide range of topics and initiatives you have undertaken. Uh, congratulations to you all. I listened to some of the talks yesterday and I was really impressed by the standard of the speakers, the wide range of the experience and so on and so forth. So once again, uh, congratulations. Biosafety and biosecurity issues are major concern. And what reminds me of this is this mask which I'm wearing in the campus. I'm sure you all can appreciate that. The economic loss due to the current pandemic is substantial and hence all stakeholders need to work together to build a human capacity uh, to address this pandemic and other issues. Yesterday, I listened to some talks and I was impressed by the One Health Initiative, the tripartite initiative by the international organizations and so on. And this initiative by AIMS itself is one such uh, good initiative to exchange ideas on how we can address these biosafety and biose biosecurity issues. Okay, So it's with this challenging backdrop that we invite uh, our next speaker, he is uh, Dr. Mustafa, and he will be speaking to us on biosafety issues for research involving insects and small animals. Let me uh, give you a brief uh, bio of Dr. Mustafa Fadzil Farid Wajidi. <clears throat> he graduated from the University of Nottingham with a degree in biology. He then proceeded to do his doctorate at the University of Newcastle under the supervision of Dr. Trevor Jowett. He completed his studies in 1990, working on the expression of mammalian drug detoxification enzymes in drosophilia, his first encounter with LMOs. He then embarked on his academic career with University Science Malaysia, which is one of the premier uh, bioscience universities in Malaysia, as all of you know. First as a lecturer in 1990, and then uh, being promoted to associate professor in 2007. Properly known as Dr. Moose, he has served USM in many capacities, including deputy dean and dean of the School of Distance Education. Currently, he is the chair of the Institutional Biosafety Committee in USM. Over to you, Dr. Mustafa. Thank you very much. I hope uh, you can hear me. Um, Okay, very good. Um, okay, uh, thank you for the invitation uh, to deliver this uh, webinar. Uh, this is my first time joining uh, uh, on this platform, Zoom. Uh, we regularly use WebEx in USM, uh, but I guess this uh, it's a time uh, to learn uh, something new uh, for everyone. Uh, I've got my slides. I hope I can share my slides. Um, okay. Um, so uh, I've got about, uh, as, I, as far as I know, I've got about half an hour to speak. Um, so um, the title that I have chosen uh, is uh, Biosafety Issues for Research Involving Insects and Small Animals. Um, uh, a little deviation from this uh, title that I gave earlier. Maybe we will include uh, arthropods as well. So um, many, many of you uh, are working uh, with uh, different type of uh, biohazards, um, you know, different types of organisms. Uh, and as you probably, uh, you probably know, uh, we classify these organisms into four different classes of biosafety levels. Um, and um, we here uh, in, in, in Malaysia, uh, uh, perhaps, uh, not many are involved in working with um, insects, uh, but here in USM, we have a few groups, uh, not too many. Uh, if you compare them with, uh, for example, people working on microorganisms. So as usual, uh, if you're talking about biosafety, then of course, uh, you look at uh, the amount of exposure 
uh, or what kind of exposure uh, people um, get um, on these biohazards. Uh, you determine what hazards are. It could be the insects or uh, the, um, uh, the pathogens that ca they carry because uh, uh, usually they're not uh, um, uh, just examined or studied per se. Um, and then what's the risk? Um, of course, uh, just to um, uh, give you some background, maybe some of you are not so uh, familiar with uh, arthropods. Uh, we have insects and they include the mosquitoes, uh, set sea flies, which we don't have here. Uh, and then we have the sand flies and then uh, we have flies, fleas, and also we have arachnids, um, the ticks and mites, which are uh, also vectors of uh, some diseases. And uh, um, to define arthropods or insects, they belong to a, a, a larger group of uh, animals, small animals, uh, which are called arthropods. And uh, an arthropod is, um, uh, to define it, is uh, an invertebrate uh, having an exoskeleton and then uh, its body is segmented and it will have a uh, paired jointed Dr. Mustafa, are you okay? Dr. Mustafa? I think he is having a Wi-Fi connection problem. Dr. Mustafa? When, we, when people working with uh, arthropods, uh, they, uh, they work at different containment levels, uh, which is uh, recommended by the uh, American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene or SAST. Dr. Mustafa, sorry yeah. to, can you just go back a few slides because we you are out of internet connection. Just go back a couple of slides. Okay. Go back one more. Uh, sorry, sorry. One more. Here? Yeah. Okay, from this onwards. Okay, no, 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 go back, go forward. Go forward this and I'll tell you when forward? to stop. Forward, just go forward, yeah. Okay. Next. I've not reached the, those slides okay, yet. This fine, this fine. Okay, no, no, I know, I know. Okay. Sorry, just go back again. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'll tell you when to stop. Stop here. Stop here. No, no, you're going too okay. fast. Okay, carry on. Doesn't matter if you repeat. Doesn't matter if you repeat. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, I just said that, um, you know, uh, I wanted to talk about insects, but as uh, uh, some of you know, uh, insects belong to a larger group of uh, animals. They're called arthropods, uh, which include insects, arachnids, and other um, uh, animals, which uh, we are not going to deal with today. Uh, and the insects that we have maybe familiar with are mosquitoes, uh, the house flies, sand flies, uh, and then uh, we have lice and also fleas. And then, uh, of course, uh, we have also the ticks and mites, which are arachnids. They belong to a different class. Um, and then uh, just to define arthropods for, for you, for those of you who are not so familiar, uh, an arthropod uh, with, 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 uh, is an inter invertebrate animal, uh, usually having an exoskeleton and its body is segmented uh, and then it has jointed appendages. Also, its legs, for example, uh, is jointed. Um, okay, um, so that's a brief introduction. And we know that we, uh, during the daytime, perhaps we are in contact with houseflies uh, or in the evenings or in the night, uh, then the mosquito that bites us and, you know, uh, upsets our sleeping patterns. Um, Okay, for those people who are actually uh, working uh, on arthropods, uh, then there are four containment levels, just like you have containment levels for your bacteria and microorganisms, for example. Uh, so this is recommended by uh, 
the American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, or, or uh, also called the ASTMH, uh, and then also the American Committee of Medical Entomology, uh, or ACME. Okay, uh, and then um, perhaps here in Malaysia, we don't have uh, biosafety level uh, for uh, facilities, uh, but uh, you know, there, there are uh, some, uh, if you're working with some of these uh, dangerous pathogens, uh, for example, out of the 12 viruses uh, that, are, uh, that are being um, uh, researched on, uh, uh, there are some uh, which uh, are actually transmitted by arthropods, uh, mostly ticks, but they have been shown experimentally uh, to be able to infect, uh, for example, mosquitoes. The favorite one is Aedes aegypti. Uh, people have actually uh, infected Aedes aegypti with the Marburg um, virus. Now, uh, a little about why biosafety is important. Um, uh, this is uh, historically uh, in the early 1900s, which is maybe uh, more than 100 years ago, uh, they actually uh, almost eradicated uh, anopheline mosquitoes, just like uh, perhaps in Malaysia, uh, you will find it very difficult to come into contact with anopheline mosquitoes unless uh, you uh, live um, somewhere in the jungles or on the periphery of jungles, or even uh, we have some uh, anopheline mosquitoes, which are uh, which uh, uh, their habitats are the uh, paddy fields that we have uh, closer to where we live. And uh, 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 in Brazil, uh, for example, they 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 had a, a, a drop of. Uh, incidents in malaria because they eliminated or almost eradicated uh, the uh, vector, the anopheline mosquitoes. But after some time, they saw that uh, they discovered uh, uh, a strain of uh, anopheles, uh, a species called anopheles gambier. And this is actually not native to Brazil, but it was uh, 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 something that is native uh, from uh, Africa. And this shows that how, you know, if you're not uh, careful on how we uh, handle materials or even sometimes uh, some of the movement of um, the uh, insects are through uh, uh, commercial means. For example, um, uh, 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 it's been documented that uh, Aedes aegypti, for example, has reached uh, to the USA, United States of America, uh, because they import a lot of tires. Uh, and as you know, the, 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 the uh, Aedes aegypti, their eggs can uh, survive uh, outside water. And when they come into contact with water, then uh, the, the eggs hatch and they get larvae. And of course, the adults, which then become the vectors. Now, um, uh, another vector is a uh, vector of Chagas disease. Uh, and it is, uh, this disease is actually uh, mainly uh, in, uh, found in Central America. But after some time, they, they, they uh, saw that uh, um, this, um, uh, this insect uh, managed to uh, spread to different parts of um, uh, other countries as well, because, uh, you know, uh, it is easily transmitted sometimes on clothes, sometimes on, um, on stuff that is transported from one country to another. And because there is a lot of movement of uh, people and uh, goods uh, from Central America to South America and vice versa, and then you get uh, importation of uh, vectors. So um, also, uh, today we have we talk about uh, the transgenic insects. Uh, this is a, a, a field that is being uh, studied, um, uh, especially in uh, the Western countries, uh, the more advanced countries of the world. And uh, because of that, also we have uh, people who are 
doing work with uh, transgenic insects, which are actually vectors of diseases. So uh, one example uh, on the Malaysian scene is how uh, we released, um, uh, uh, deliberately released uh, genetically modified Aedes aegypti in order to control uh, dengue. As we know that dengue is a disease that causes a lot of um, uh, 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 problems. We have uh, many cases and sometimes death as well. Um, so um, uh, uh, a group um, called Oxitec uh, uh, in uh, cooperation with uh, the Institute of uh, Medical Research here in Malaysia, uh, they, uh, they released uh, a strain of uh, Aedes aegypti, uh, which um, uh, uh, was a, a, a tool actually or a strategy uh, to actually eliminate the uh, Aedes aegypti population. Uh, of course, there was a pu public hoo-ha uh, 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 about that. Uh, some um, people uh, who are uh, less knowledgeable, uh, they were uh, uh, afraid that, uh, you know, that, that these um, uh, uh, strains of mosquitoes can actually transmit uh, dengue as well. But it is well documented uh, that, okay, this is a cartoon that we got. Um, so uh, people were afraid and they were anxious about the trials of uh, releasing uh, these transgenic mosquitoes into the uh, environment or into the um, uh, local scenes, into the community. Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, it was not only in Malaysia, but in several countries as well, in Cayman Islands, uh, and they wanted to do that in Florida. Uh, of course, um, uh, they met a lot of uh, opposition as well. Uh, and even now, uh, the, the, uh, there is mixed results uh, in uh, this strain of mosquitoes actually um, uh, trying to control dengue, okay? Trying to uh, control the spread of dengue. And as we know, with all um, uh, technologies today, uh, there is an improvement, constant improvement of um, uh, technologies. And today we have uh, perhaps uh, transgenic uh, mosquitoes and sometimes uh, in future, maybe uh, they will have uh, a similar uh, strategy as well to control insect uh, uh, agricultural pests. Uh, we have a constant uh, problem of uh, having uh, uh, pests. Uh, for example, in, in some countries, they have already uh, released um, genetically modified uh, fruit fly to control fruit fly populations. Uh, whether it is uh, you know, given permission uh, by different countries like US where uh, it is more stringently controlled or even in, 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 in parts of uh, Europe, for example, uh, we have uh, yet to see. Uh, but uh, uh, the scientists think that uh, uh, in terms of biosafety, um, the, the insects themselves are okay to use, they're, they're, they're well researched, um, but whatever uh, the National Institutes of Health uh, in the USA, for example, they have guidelines uh, for uh, the use of uh, anything that is uh, using the recombinant DNA and also uh, of uh, using genetically modified um, uh, organisms. Uh, this is a, a, a table which uh, just lists uh, uh, different types of insects that have been uh, 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 that have been genetically modified, and we know that Drosophila uh, melanogaster. It is the mod, uh, model organism, and even in USM, we have a group uh, who are uh, looking for uh, anti-aging genes, uh, for example, and they're using Drosophila as a model, and that we have to um, uh, regulate uh, the work that they're using uh, because uh, it involves uh, uh, living um, um, modified organisms. Uh, in addition to that, uh, it is Egypti, uh, some uh, different species of Anopheles uh, and also uh, other insects as well. Um, 
I will not go through uh, them all. Uh, and then um, uh, one of the worries is that uh, the, the, the construct of a transgene um, um, is composed of different genes and some of them uh, encode, for example, anti antibiotic resistance, uh, 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 transposase, which allows uh, genes to jump from one site to another in, in an organism uh, or other uh, toxic genes, for example. And uh, of course, sometimes they have viral components of this uh, 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 gene constructs. Uh, and because of that, uh, people are worried and, and the, the, the risk assessment has to be done carefully in order to, to make uh, whatever is being generated uh, safe, uh, especially in the case of uh, um, unintended release. Um, Okay, uh, GM insects, uh, it's um, regulated here in Malaysia. We have different groups uh, looking at vector-borne disease, for example, uh, and then uh, uh, agricultural pests. Uh, and then sometimes uh, they're, they're also uh, used to uh, produce recombinant proteins. We had a group in, in, in uh, USM as well, uh, um, um, led by uh, Professor Sudesh, uh, he was also uh, trying to uh, 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 produce proteins from uh, insect larvae. Okay, uh, uh, the next, uh, I don't have much time, but uh, uh, am I limited to uh, how much time do I have, uh, Prof. Krishnan? Um, because I have a, quite a few slights, but you okay. You can go through uh, fairly rapidly. Yeah. I know I'm uh, only through half of my slides, but I will try to finish off uh, in uh, the next five minutes or so. I will try to wrap it up. Uh, do we have time? How much time do I have? Uh, can I have five minutes? Yes. Okay. So um, in addition to that, uh, there are also um, biosafety issues uh, uh, for research involving small animals. Uh, and um, of course, um, lab animals are essential tools in biomedical research. Uh, um, many uh, so, uh, uh, of these animals are used as animal models uh, to study, uh, for example, uh, gene expression or to, 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 uh, to study uh, human disease. Um, and then uh, uh, of course, uh, one of the worries is that um, uh, we, these animals, small animals, also have uh, infectious agents. Uh, one of the stories that came out after the COVID-19 pandemic uh, was that it was uh, the, the virus originated from uh, wild bats. Uh, whether true or not uh, is still um, uh, 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 an issue that is being heavily debated, uh, whether uh, the, the, the wild animal markets in uh, exotic markets in China was the source of some of these infections. Uh, we still uh, are awaiting uh, thorough research, for example. So that's just one example. And there could be some other examples of, uh, for example, the bee virus, uh, which infects monkeys as well. And it could be transmitted to animals. I, I see that there's a uh, one of the speakers who have uh, actually touched uh, a topic on uh, zoonotic infections. And then uh, some uh, animals are being uh, given doses of uh, pathogenic uh, microorganisms to test whether they can be used as um, vaccines, for example, uh, to look for uh, treatments and cures or to look at the pathway of diseases. Uh, so uh, that's another uh, uh, worry uh, and issue that should be dealt with, especially if you're working uh, on um, these um, highly pathogenic, pathogenic organisms. And then, uh, as we said, for insects, we have also recombinant gene te technologies um, for animals and uh, one um, uh, 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 recent development in uh, um, um, uh, the, the, the 
uh, creation or generation of uh, transgenic animals is CRISPR, where uh, there is uh, uh, um, the, the editing of uh, genomes, uh, how successful it will be, we have still to see. But uh, uh, even, uh, for example, there are people, there are groups uh, in different countries and even in China, they say that they have even tried it out uh, on humans. Um, and then uh, xenotransplantation, uh, transplantation of organs from uh, different organisms, and then humanizing animal cells in order to use them uh, to treat uh, diseases um, uh, in humans. Uh, so this is also something that uh, has to be uh, regulated and uh, looked at carefully, uh, whether th uh, they are actually um, uh, um, hazardous uh, to the people who are working with them, or in the event that it is uh, unintentionally released uh, or there is an escape, then uh, whether it will affect uh, other uh, the environment as well. Uh, I'll skip that and then finally say, uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, we have to have site specific safety policies. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you in AIMS and we in USM and other universities and uh, research institutes, we have our safe biosafety policies, and uh, it is always important to monitor uh, the work, and that is uh, in, in collaboration with uh, or in cooperation with uh, the biosafety uh, department in Malaysia. Uh, we are trying uh, to actually uh, uh, look at and control uh, the, the work that is done uh, by many of our scientists. Uh, hopefully, they don't see that as an hindrance, uh, uh, something that will uh, actually uh, uh, prevent them from doing uh, their research. Uh, but it is all, only uh, um, to look at uh, the safety aspects. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, uh, I'm sorry if I exceeded the time. Uh, um, okay, um, uh, I'm open if uh, you there are some questions that I can answer. Otherwise, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Moose. I, let, allow me to quickly summarize what you have said uh, very briefly. As a non-expert, uh, somebody who has no knowledge of the field, uh, let me challenge myself to see how well I've understood your topic. You have uh, classified the different types of insects involved in research the arthropod containment levels and given examples. You have highlighted the importance of biosafety and biosecurity uh, in research. Uh, and you have given examples of the resurgence of diseases, especially with global travel. And you have highlighted some the issues, the biosafety issues involved in genetically modified insects and their role in uh, agriculture, veterinary, and of course, public health. And you have highlighted the importance again uh, of such considerations in uh, infections, zoonotic infections, vaccine development, and in the study of pathogenesis. And finally, you have highlighted uh, recombinant DNA techniques, uh, xenotransplantation and humanizing animals. And, and again, their biosafety and uh, biosecurity issues and concerns. I hope I have summarized that. Now, organizers, do we take questions at the end or do we want questions now? Uh, so you can uh, have uh, at the end of the session, one second speaker completes the talk. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Subhash. We have a second speaker who is Dr. Adel Mohammed. And he will speak to us on the Libyan experience in biosafety and biosecurity training programs. Dr. Adel is the university lecturer and researcher in the, in the departments of basic veterinary science in the College of Veterinary Medicine, Department of Medical Science in the College of Pharmacy and in the Department of Forensic Medicine uh, in general administration of judicial expertise and research. He's the current coordinator of biosafety and biosecurity in the Libyan universities since June 2019. He has wide experience being an instructor and trainer of biosafety and biosecurity programs for health, science, 
and research institutions in Libya. And he hopes to uh, integrate many of these concepts into the curriculum. He's had experience as head of the Office of Conferences and International Affairs in the Omar al Mukhtar University and as head of the Department of Pathology. So over to you, Dr. Adele. You have wide experience in training and we look forward to listening to you. Uh, Dr. We Adil, can... uh, we cannot hear you, Dr. Adil. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you, Dr. Kress and uh, the, uh, the, the organizing team. And thank you for having me today. Um, for briefly, I'm, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the, the Libyan experience in um, uh, biosafety and biosecurity training program. Let me, uh, I just want share to my, share my screen. Um, can you see my slides? Yes, yes, we can see. Hmm. Great, is it in, in full mode now? Uh, yeah, yeah, perfect. Go ahead, uh, Dr. Ade. Hmm. Okay, okay, great, thank you. Yeah, just briefly, just in case um, everybody, um, uh, just uh, any, anybody doesn't know where Libya is. So Libya is, in, is located in North Africa, and uh, you can see how much time we have difference here. We can probably have six hours difference time. And um, um, the contents of my presentation today is going to be about the introduction structures of biosafety and biosecurity in Libya, reform plans of um, uh, by risk ma uh, management in Libya, biosafety and uh, COVID-19 in Libya. So basically the introduction, the field of biosafety and biosecurity in Libya was applied or applied in a ad hoc basis without any uh, planning, without any proper instructions. Uh, we can say the birth or the beginning of the changing point of the of the virus management in Libya was in Grand Millennium Hotel in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, you can see the um, the Petronas towers back on that in the corner, and uh, that was in July uh, 2016, where we had uh, the virus management training development program. Uh, for Libyan trainee, trainers uh, hosted by uh, Sandia, Sandia uh, the National uh, Laboratories. Uh, this is my group, this is my trainer, uh, 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 and this is me. And uh, after coming back from, uh, from Malaysia, uh, we discovered how big the gap is in our institutions in terms of biosafety and biosecurity and how high the mountain uh, uh, we need to climb. And uh, so we, uh, we could apply even for myself talking, we could apply the basic of bio-risk bio management even while I'm crossing the road. I need to uh, like uh, calculate what is the risk and what is the, uh, the mitigation plan. So I discovered that uh, the virus management is extremely important in our life. We can apply, it's a global work, it requires, uh, requires lots of planning, lots of, of hands are working together and also uh, multidisciplinary collaboration. So uh, uh, first to apply the, um, the AMP model, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, most of you are aware of it. Uh, which is, uh, relies on the assessment, mitigation, and performance. So what, what was the, uh, the assessment? What is, what, what is our virus, virus management uh, level? And what is the plan? What is the mitigation plan? And if there is any gaps or any things need to be filled, 
what is the performance plan. So we apply that Swiss cheese view on measuring performance. Where are the holes in our uh, virus management system? Are the holes uh, 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 they were expected to be or have the holes shifted over the time. How big are those holes grown larger over the time? Are there new holes forming over the time? Is our risk management system working as intended to be, to be abstract? Potential paths leading to adverse consequences. So, Based on the uh, plan, do, check, act model, we, I, uh, we uh, start a risk assessment in our uh, institutions. And um, uh, as, as, as we uh, started to introduce the basic of, or the basis of virus management or the terms of virus management in our institutions, we, uh, start to uh, convince or uh, persuade the, uh, um, the, uh, the institutional uh, administrations on the, uh, the, the importance of uh, risk assessment and risk management. And um, uh, we, we, we propose that the, the, the proper risk assessment can help determine security needs and also, risk assessment is uh, if it's, it's, it's not accomplished, what's going to be the next uh, uh, what's a step in our planning? As I said, the the gap is so big in in, in, in our institution in terms of of bio safety and bio security. So we 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 start uh, thinking about the benefits of risk assessments, which is the uh, 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 state in the benchmark, um, uh, uh, benchmarks provides a demonstrable record of system performance, support facilities, certifications, accredit accreditation process, help identity areas improvement using consistent framework, provides assurance that the risk is acceptable, facilitate maintenance of sustainability and uh, of the system, and can save money, which is most important, and time. Yeah. And uh, of course, helps to prevent uh, accident and incidents. So the logic model, the priorities of the problem, intervening ver uh, variables, underlying conditions. So um, we had a lack of effective virus management policies or practices in, in our institutions. That was due to many reasons. Um, uh, most of um, most of all, uh, unawareness, lack of law, laws and regulations, lack of accountability, lack of resources, lack of good consultations. Um, so, what 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 are the underlying conditions? Research facilities do not consider the virus management system as a first priority. The higher authorities did not set laws and regulations, legislations to enforce virus management. Since there, there is no laws or regulations, there is no accountability for losing or using uh, uh, valuable um, uh, biological material outside the facility. So I, I, I set um, a, a hypothesis of the if and then relationship. If we apply an effective virus management policy, that's going to be strengthening the research capacity, fostering international exchange and collaboration, fostering science freedom, trans transparency, trust, accountability, showing safe and secure practice. All of that is going to be um, uh, uh, come with the uh, prevention and uh, of the misuse of the valuable lab laboratory materials and valuable biological material. Then we will assure working in a safer environment and eventually we will have a good virus management system. After the assessment plan, we went to the next step, which is the mitigation plan. So what are the steps uh, in order to mitigate or uh, foster our virus management level? 
So it started an institutional accreditation by the Libyan Committee for Biosafety and Bioethics. And we found in the Libyan Biosafety Network, which I'm uh, leading, uh, introducing the terms of virus and bio virus uh, management and working with the university where academics and professional laboratory and chemical stores, etc., and establishing uh, of the One Health approach and job vaccinations under uh, many disciplinaries under the umbrella of the LCBB, which is the Libyan Committee of Biosafety Bio and Bioethics. Reinforced capacity terms biosafety and biosecurity and ethics. Uh, ensure compliance with the biosafety and laboratory biosecurity using existing uh, mechanisms to uh, 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 procedures and system reinforce local institutional bodies. Uh, uh, and also practice and procedures, training program and supervision, um, collaboration and training programs with national and international organizations such as SNL, WHO, FAO, CD, etc. The third pillar of the, uh, of the AMP model is the performance plan. So we, when we gauge our uh, virus management level uh, to the international level or the national level or the, the, the regional level, we found um, uh, a big steps we need to take in order to meet that level. So we, uh, we proposed a reform uh, plan uh, to enforce the uh, virus management. So we, we started to introduce, reinforce, then master the... Um, uh, unfortunately, these kind of steps or enforcement plans, they are costly and complex that they need. They need lots of money, lots of planning, and also time consuming. Um, so we prioritize our action to um, uh, certain areas. Uh, we start with the organization, uh, such as like Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, and uh, uh, the national CDC and the LCBB and, and, and other institutions. And we start to instruct uh, our program to the, uh, the academic level, to the professionals, to the trainees. And also uh, we focused on certain area or certain individuals um, who we can uh, implement or we can train the biosafety and biosecurity levels. So we, we, we focused on academic um, uh, institutions, uh, basically universities. We introduced the virus management uh, terms in University of Libya. We have Libya mainly, we have mostly seven uh, public universities. Uh, uh, we established the biosafety network throughout the focal point in each university, applying the virus MP model in each university, conducting training and developing biosafety programs and introducing the field of biosafety and biosecurity among the university curriculum. Access the global virus management curriculum library. We start planting the seed of the virus management, taking care of it, planting, and finally to get the final tree here. The, the, the final tree is, is, um, is rooted or is based on the Libyan National Committee of Biosafety and Biosecurity and uh, under the supervision of Libyan uh, Biosafety uh, Network, uh, we first uh, we first focus on the academic uh, institutions, then the public health, national uh, center uh, for disease prevention and control, uh, environmental science, environment and life science, human medicine, veterinary medicine, and uh, industry uh, sector. Um, we attended many, many programs, many workshops here. Um, most of it, or uh, most important of it, that the, yeah, it's the virus management curriculum development for higher education hosted by, and, uh, by uh, Sandia National Laboratory. Um, uh, and also we, 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 we participated in many other uh, uh, events such as the MENA regions. Um, all these um, come with uh, all these come with a uh, maybe the the or uh, payoff with the the biosafety and uh, COVID or during the the, the pandemic um, uh, or COVID pandemic uh, when when happened in Libya. 
Um, our, 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 our network helped in public campaign on the COVID preparedness and response and COVID prevention and control. Consultation and communications and also training programs, virtual training programs on COVID and biosafety and biosecurity, participations in the local and national meeting and webinars. Um, we first started the first, um, we can say, uh, the, the virtual training program on the uh, SARS COVID and COVID 19 by safety and by security for targeted uh, trainees and they uh, who are dealing with the COVID 19 uh, testing. Um, the, 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 uh, the course uh, composed of 10, uh, 10 uh, topics or uh, addresses. All of all of these addresses are um, all all of these addresses are adapted and modified from the uh, from the Sandia National Laboratory uh, modules. Um, uh, we uh, during the, the thirty days, uh, me and my colleagues, we were able to train um, ten trainees, more than ten trainees around the, the country on how to deal with the COVID-19 uh, in terms of biosafety and biosecurity. And also we had a, a training programs on COVID-19 uh, biosafety and precautions. We had many training programs, many workshops on how to, uh, to, to, to uh, sterilize, how disinfect, how to uh, educate and how to uh, uh, wear uh, the proper uh, precautions and take the uh, extra measures for uh, for uh, pre preventing. Okay, and also we had many workshops and education campaigns and around the country, and uh, all these uh, uh, with with the, with the national and international speakers, and and as, uh, uh, also we have like um, uh, awareness uh, 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 brochures and uh, bulletins. And then also the, the, the national, the Libyan National Committee of Biosafety and Biosecurity, we had, she had many, uh, many had posters and education uh, campaigns. So in summary, what we have learned that the, 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 the biosafety and biosecurity is so important, so vital for everybody. And uh, we are uh, even in our uh, life uh, basic needs. What does it mean for us? It does a lot. It means a lot. It's receiving, uh, uh, responding, valuing, organizing, and characterizing to get the higher uh, level. Um, we are doing our best. We are uh, chasing time and the uh, and the challenges to, uh, to 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 come over or to to challenge the obstacles, and eventually we'll get the success and the proper and uh, the proper level or the intended. Uh, end of the biosafety and biosecurity in uh, Libya. Thank you for your awareness. Thank you for your listening and uh, stay uh, safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Adela. I think that was a good presentation. Let me summarize your presentation in Thank a you. minute or so. Uh, you, you started by saying that there was a lack of such awareness in Libya and then after attending the conference in Kuala Lumpur or so, you identified the gaps in your biosafety regulations and issues. And then you identified the issues involved using the Swiss cheese model. You also said clearly how the holes becoming bigger over time. Do they change? Are there different holes? Have they shifted in place? And so on and so forth. So you really identified all the problems in great detail. And then you work through a number of processes, well-planned processes. You know, you had you worked across industry, academia, administration. You worked across different sectors, from health to veterinary to agriculture, and so on and so forth. You worked together as a team. And finally, I think um, the COVID-19 provided an opportunity, fortunate or unfortunate. Uh, for you to actually apply some of these principles and show the benefit of all your work which you have done in the past. So well done in Libya. And uh, I'm also happy to note that you are, you know, you, you have done an evaluation of your program and you seek higher goals. And you have really uh, given a good example of how 
uh, capacity should be built in any country in one particular field. Uh, having worked in WHO uh, in the Western Pacific region, I understand how important it is to build capacity through a wide variety of uh, stakeholders, wide range of programs and so on. And yours is one such example. Okay, do we have questions now? We don't have any questions so far, but um, any comments from anybody? Uh, I have a question for Dr. Adele, actually. I know you mentioned all the details, uh, detailed challenges you faced in Libya while trying to undertake this over the last uh, few years or so, but could you tell us how you succeeded? Could you tell us some secrets of success, some small stories perhaps to tell us, you know, I'm sure there must have been people who helped you or who were against you as well. So tell us uh, how you managed to do all these things in a few words, yeah. Yeah, it's a good question, actually, Dr. Kress. Um, my, my, I think my personal um, uh, story of success is focusing or fractionation the, the job first. Then I will focus on, um, I will leave the, the higher authorities back and I will focus, uh, I will start a reform from backwards, from the, from the button. Okay, I mean, well, I focused on the, on the training, the, for example, of a, a prof or, uh, university professors, my colleagues, and start uh, spreading the, the terms of virus and bio biosecurity, uh, biosafety and biosecurity among the lower level of the, uh, of the, uh, of the academic uh, levels, as like students or uh, uh, the teacher assistants. I will let you know, uh, in, our, in our cultures, the, 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 the higher officers, uh, you cannot, it, it's very difficult to knock the doors of the high uh, offices. So basically I focused on the button. I started from the root down, which I gained the fruits um, uh, instead of like going back. And also I did not ignore the going back to the, uh, to the higher authorities to seek the reform in the institution and the, and the, and the constitution which, um, which will apply the biosafety and biosecurity. Uh, and also uh, I focus on teamwork. Teamwork very important. When I focus on the, uh, as I said, uh, Libya is, so, uh, is, is a big country, has uh, seven uh, main public uh, universities. Um, we made a team of um, focal points in each university which will apply the same work in each university. We have like a, a, a periodic uh, report on, in each university in terms of biosafety and biosecurity, which is uh, any, 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 any report or any uh, events that applied in one university will apply on, on, on all the universities. Sharing experience and focusing on the, uh, on the certain cat category of the trainees. This is my, uh, I think this is my lead of success. Uh, well spoken, uh, Dr. Adele, and I'm very impressed. You are a very young uh, researcher, so I wish you all the very best in, uh, in such undertakings. I have a question for Dr. Moose as well. Now, you have uh, highlighted many challenges. Uh, as a lay public, I'm worried. Uh, uh, so can you, you know, explain in a few words what the scientists are doing to allay the anxiety of the common man, you know? How strict are your institutional guidelines? You know, what precautions do you emphasize and so on and so forth? Could you just, I know you mentioned most of these things, but could you just allay the anxiety of a common man perhaps? Um, uh, to put it in, in, in a nutshell, uh, we should not be unduly worried. Um, but, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, these uh, R&D activities going on uh, and there are different uh, agencies and uh, committees uh, around the country uh, that are trying to make sure that whatever is being done is done in the, uh, in the interest of the safety of the workers themselves, the public, and also the environment. Um, so um, there are these dangers uh, that, uh, you know, the, the hazards and the risks uh, involved, and I'm sure um, many of our researchers they are actually uh, 
cooperating with us. Uh, for example, in USM, we know very well uh, that there are people who are engaged in uh, research activities with insects and the small mammals, uh, and they are giving us uh, good uh, cooperation in uh, uh, doing the best that they can. Um, the, the, the problem with some institutions is that um, uh, the, the facilities are old, especially, you know, uh, Ames, Ames um, is a fairly young university compared to say USM. We built our facilities, uh, we started say uh, in 1970s, the early 1970s. And some of the labs that we have, you know, they, 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 they were built uh, 30 to 40, maybe about 50 years ago. Uh, so uh, some of them do not conform to the present standards. And to actually uh, uh, renovate uh, these uh, labs, for example, so that they meet the current standards will cost money. And this is not the time to talk about money for, for any one of us. Uh, so that's the problems that they have. But uh, they, they are trying uh, their best uh, within uh, their limited budgets uh, to actually conform. And uh, we get a lot of help from, say, uh, uh, the uh, GMAC, uh, Genetically uh, 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 Gene Modification Advisory Committee, uh, telling us, okay, these are things that you can do. Okay, you don't have uh, so much money, but uh, in lieu of that, uh, you can do something, uh, you know, that, that doesn't maybe meet uh, the standards that you would like to have uh, if you're well endowed. But uh, so, so people are, are, are doing, and uh, the good thing is that I think is all this is about education and uh, giving people uh, a, a sense of, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 um, understanding how actually their work um, uh, should be actually regulated. Because uh, if we don't have this, um, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, safety practices and SOPs, then one day, uh, you know, somebody <laughs> will do something uh, stupid, for example, and cause a lot of problems to people. Um, but I, I don't think at this moment we should be unduly worried. We have uh, certain agencies and parties that are helping us out and looking after the interests uh, of our general public and also the environment. Thank you. Actually, you answered my second question as well, which I wanted to ask is about the uh, the lab facilities you have for containment. Uh, you, we know that you know there may be limited facilities for P4 level uh, labs, more than one perhaps in a country. So, uh, can you quickly summarize what efforts you are taking uh, about laboratory safety, and number two about how you perhaps can work with industry or already. Um, are you working with industry to, to learn with them, to collaborate with them? Just quickly on these points, yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, briefly, uh, we do not have any level four uh, facilities in the whole country, not the, in the Malaysia. We have uh, a few, I think three or four uh, level three facilities in the whole of Malaysia. Um, and I think that there is a, 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 a growing a trend uh, where people are collaborating with uh, industry and industry also uh, knows that um, uh, there is a, a strength uh, in terms of uh, numbers uh, in the research universities and research centers uh, that they can make use of. Um, uh, they may have more funds than uh, the universities and research centers. Uh, so it is in the interest of all, uh, I think, uh, we will see more of that collaboration uh, in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good answer, I think. And uh, anybody else, uh, Dr. Subhash, you want to ask something? I'm sure you may have something uh, to ask. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, maybe first I will ask to Dr. Adil. Dr. Adil, uh, your talk was so very impressive. I have uh, one question uh, because uh, there are many challenges in Libya. So from a uh, perspective of bias management implementation in Libya, would you please elaborate 
what are the main challenges in implementing bio risk management in uh, research institutions research centers and uh, academic institutions like universities uh, sure thank you it's a good question actually um, um, there are many challenges uh, say from the from the equipment required equipments a challenge and the basic needs for the, for applying the basic virus and bio bio safety precautions um, a surveillance uh, administration uh, procedures uh, also uh, engineering procedures and uh, equipment um, even sometimes we are lack of the PPEs as well uh, like, uh, the the uh, personal protective equipment for uh, for for the for the daily routine uh, work uh, when um, you know as you know as especially on the, the during uh, during uh, uh, covid-19 crisis it's very hard very challenge to uh, afford the basic needs for the uh, for the daily routine even for the university level uh, work or the uh, or the uh, the uh, or the uh, laboratory section um, we don't have the, uh, the the higher or the, the facilities that have a BSL three or four in our in country, but we have like BS, BSL one and BSL two, and uh, we uh, we need the uh, focus on the uh, building itself, the lab itself, the facility itself, from the biosecurity first, then. Uh, we'll go to the biosafety. We have many challenges, starting from money, from equipment, from training, individual training, trained individuals, as well as the uh, the procedure practices and constitutional and institutional uh, 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 regulations and laws. So we, we, we have many, many challenges. We try to overcome, but uh, we, are, we, do, we are doing our best to overcome those challenges. Thank you, Dr. Adil. Mm -hmm. Now I have one question to uh, Dr. Mustafa. Uh, Dr. Mustafa, because uh, nowadays, uh, by safety and by security, uh, it's not just, just within the laboratory. So, by safety and by security is very, very important in the field and uh, I mean uh, beyond the laboratories. So, uh, because because uh, we are live on Facebook and YouTube. So, for the common people, uh, those are not having a wonderful background in biological sciences. So, uh, to do, just to make sure that there will be no any outbreak or infections uh, because of the small uh, insects or the small animals, those are in the vicinity of the towns or in the vicinity of the living area. So what type of precautions people should take to make sure that there will be you know, any outbreak or uh, they will protect themselves from, uh, I mean, any uh, that type of the infections? Um, okay, uh, just a brief reply, uh, perhaps. Um, I think if there are uh, unknown, you know, uh, sources of, uh, biological hazards. That means something that you're not sure about. Uh, don't don't approach it and don't handle it uh, until you get um, you know um, uh, uh, information about that and advice from uh, someone who is authoritative in the field. Uh, it is best to report to the uh, uh, what do you call this to the authorities or uh, to to people. Uh, who are in the know to get their advice and maybe they will do it themselves. Uh, I give you an example. For example, uh, th there were uh, incidences in Malaysia where they had, uh, uh, you know, uh, whales coming onto the, sh onto the beaches in Malaysia. And what uh, the people did at that time was just to contact uh, the, the, the authorities concerned, uh, Perhilitan or whatever, and tell them uh, and they will do the necessary. And I'm sure uh, even if worst case scenario, uh, you just contact emergency services and they will uh, be able to help in that matter. Um, and, um, you know, as, as, as it is with the, uh, what we see in the current pandemic, you know, it can easily be transmitted 
uh, just like that, you know, uh, uh, somebody silly doing uh, silly things, taking things out of the labs and whatever, and uh, taking it in, in public into a uh, uh, public uh, uh, place. And then, you know, several people, several scores of people, several hundreds of people get infected. And uh, that's something that uh, we hope we don't have to live with. Uh, uh, and, you know, uh, uh, and, and if there are, uh, we hope that there are people already uh, who are trained um, for uh, tackling this uh, type of problems. Dr. Subhash, before you go on to your question, I just have a quick uh, comment on this. Uh, I think we must all remind ourselves of the smallpox vaccine, the laboratory incident which happened in the UK in 1978. The last few cases in the world were perhaps laboratory uh, induced. So the, it only underscores the importance of biosafety and biosecurity. Okay, And uh, answering uh, part of your question, uh, Dr. Subhash, as a family doctor myself, I think uh, we must be aware of the new disease patterns in our environment and communicate that to the public. The public also need to be aware, as the speaker just said, of uh, you know whatever animals or any insects, then don't approach them um, and touch them perhaps if you are not aware. So a kind of common sense approach is important, uh, but the public health uh, professionals need to be aware of emerging diseases, emerging disease patterns and convey that to the people. And perhaps in the future, we can have geographically, just have geog geographical information systems, we can have geographical based diseases, you know, so that if you, before you go to Taman Nagara, for example, you know what to do. Uh, that's something we do in tourism, medical tourism. Before you go to a place, you identify the potential diseases there, you use uh, appropriate uh, insect repellents. Uh, so that, very, that is very basic. Okay, so uh, a, a partial answer to your question, uh, Dr. Subhash. You go ahead with the other questions. Yeah, th thank you, sir. I think this were, uh, I mean, uh, just uh, I was thinking uh, these two broader questions, uh, but but maybe uh, Dr. Mustafa can highlight from perspective of Malaysia, uh, what are the main challenges uh, while dealing with, uh, I mean, uh, insects and small animals in uh, Malaysia, because lots of deforestation is happening ecosystems are getting disturbed. So definitely small animals as well as insects will be coming out from that, uh, I mean, these ecosystems. And uh, we never know. Because for example, uh, we believe that this uh, uh, coronavirus, uh, I mean, this pandemic uh, is originated from the bats, but we never know in the future, maybe some uh, dangerous virus will come from the insect or small animals, we never know. So since uh, ecosystems are getting disturbed, uh, deforestation is happening. And uh, uh, as a result of that one, when the small animals will come out in the I mean, uh, uh, towns or whatever is indirectly, directly. So, uh, I mean, what are the main challenges in Malaysia from your perspective? Maybe you can just highlight uh, Dr. Mustafa. Um, I don't really have an answer for that. Uh, but uh, uh, as, as I said, uh, you know, uh, we should be very diligent uh, about uh, what's happening around us. And I think um, uh, uh, the, the, the authorities uh, in the various places, they are uh, looking into the matters. But really, you know, uh, I think even, even the current pandemic actually shocked the whole world. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you can't imagine a country like America leading the table in the number of infections and death and things like that. Um, but uh, uh, it would be, uh, uh, as um, uh, I think Dr. Adil also said, something like that, uh, it would need international cooperation as well, because we don't have experts or experts in everything. And, you know, there are experts around the world that we need to cooperate. And sometimes, you know, uh, I, I see that this, this, this uh, uh, current uh, situation in which there is sort of like uh, a, a locking of horns between China and the US is not good for everyone because I think we all need uh, each other at times like this, uh, you know, um, uh, and I hope that uh, we, we will not encounter such a big disaster like this uh, in, in many, many years to come. And even now, uh, we hope that uh, whatever happened will have its, you know, it will, it will be, um, take care of itself 
uh, in in the near future and you know uh, i have heard predictions of two years uh, five years that we will have we will have to deal with this problem um, but uh, uh, i think it's for everyone to to be diligent as well uh, look around us don't 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 think that we are living in our uh, own uh, worlds uh, spheres uh, we have to be looking around as you said uh, you know the activities sometimes that we are, we do not know of uh, you know, we know of the, uh, you know, destruction of the forest uh, in front of our eyes. But uh, behind those scenes, sometimes there's even worse things that are happening. Um, yeah, okay. That's that's my, my uh, little contribution. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mustafa. I do appreciate uh, Over to you, uh, uh, moderator, I mean, uh, uh, Dr. Krishna. Yeah, you have any other questions, Dr.? Subhash, you are the most, uh, one of the most uh, illustrious in this <laughs> group. Okay, yeah, I have a few uh, comments to make while people think about questions. Actually, uh, this it makes me think over the last few minutes, this COVID response, COVID uh, response has made us understand uh, the importance of biosafety and biosecurity. So I must congratulate the, uh, the organizers of this seminar, you know, so that uh, it is so timely. Uh, it has led us to believe that you know, we were fairly complacent. Sometimes, you know, we need some shocks. And this is one example of how this shock has made us identify our gaps in our knowledge. It's uh, humbled us. Uh, it has made a difference to the way we think about problems. We think we know everything, but no. But we need to work together. You see, uh, the, the earlier speaker just mentioned how countries are not working with each other. WHO is a very good opportunity it is an opportune uh, per, uh, agency to bring uh, agencies together, to bring countries together, to sit at the table and talk. WHO is sometimes the expert, but sometimes WHO depends on other experts uh, in other countries. And they have something called collaborating centers. I'm sure you have heard about WHO collaborating centers. So a collaborating center is a, a center of excellence, which works with WHO provides input to WHO. It does not get funding from WHO. It gets, it provides expertise to WHO and through WHO to the other countries in the world. So I'm sure, uh, Dr. Mustafa, I pose a challenge to you. Uh, I think with the expert and uh, knowledge, I pose this challenge, not just to Mustafa, to colleagues in Ames and in other parts of the world. You, if you build your center to be very strong, then you can actually apply to WHO for a collaborating center status for research in entomology, perhaps for research for capacity development, WHO collaborating center for capacity development in biosafety in Libya, because you, what you have done now is shown as a good example. So I post this challenge to you and uh, open the floor again for further questions. Any questions uh, through the... Dr. Yeah. Press, can I add just one comment, please? Go ahead. Oh, so, yeah. Sorry, your mic is muted. Oh, is it, is it okay now? Yeah, yeah. Now it's I, just clear. Wanna, I just want to share my my screen for one point, one, um, one slide. So this is exactly, you see my slide now. Can you see it, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, exactly. This is exactly what's going on with the, with, during the, uh, the, uh, the crisis of COVID-19. Everybody thinks that is not my boat. We actually, we are on the same boat around the world. We have to collaborate. Actually, as a pathologist, I think we need to take the the battle of the uh, uh, change the battle uh, rules. We are in a defense position. I think we need to be in a, in a like uh, uh, in an attack defense uh, attack position. And instead of waiting the, 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 the diseases or the, the endemics or pandemics to come to us, we have to go there. I think we, we over 
exceeded overstep the natural laws you know when we we need, when we transgress the nature the nature will 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 defend itself and will 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 counter attack i think that's exactly what's what, what's happened during the the covid-19 um we transgress and we overstepped and we uh consumed what we should not consume and this is what are actually we are harvesting what we have done before so i think we need to uh, instead of waiting the viruses to come to us we have to go to the i think we have to think of a way to uh, pre or uh, pre prepare the vaccine before even the virus emerge we think we need to prepare certain uh, 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 mutations uh, that may be highly violent mutations in some viruses and be ready for it for them not wait for them to come to us uh, this is a new approach this is some, this is a new idea uh, i'm proposing to certain vi uh, virologists and environmentalists uh, in order to prevent the next um, the next um, uh, pandemics or there is the, uh, the the next potential pandemics uh, Yes, uh, the, the, the current crisis requires everybody's hand because we are, as I said, we are riding the same boat. If any, we are, uh, we are living in a globalized world. Uh, if some, something just got forbidden and uh, happened in Malaysia, certainly it will happen in China and India and Libya and uh, Europe and USA, etc. So I think we need to work together. And also, we need to, to think smart. We are not the smart, the smartest creatures um, God or Allah have even uh, created. Now we are. I think we are the weakest uh, on the on the, on the creation creation list. Um, uh, uh, viruses are more more smarter than us. They can cause diseases. They can cause pandemics. We have to prepare ourselves. We have to take extra precautions. Either it's like defensive precautions or attack uh, precautions. Thank you. Uh, I like your slide, uh, Dr. Adel. It was very good. It showed how important that we cannot neglect the problem of others. And I, as, a, as somebody who has worked in public health and global public health, I want to, uh, I agree with what you just said, but at the same time, resources are of concern. It's very difficult to convince ministers to invest in a vaccine for a disease which is about to occur. So that's a theoretical possibility. So our research must be on the frontier. It must pick up the potential diseases very, very early and then, and then prepare vaccines. It's a very difficult task, you know, because do you have the vaccines ready first or do we, you know, in, uh, wait for the disease to occur? It's an ethical question. Where do we put our limited resources into children who are unimmunized, who, into water, sanitation facilities, immunization, uh, migrant workers, you know, we have huge challenges. So uh, I understand your concern uh, as a researcher, but if I put my hat of public health, then I would say that all I can give you for money is for research. Um, uh, that's the real reality of life. Any other questions or comments? Can I just make uh, uh, some comments? Uh, this is regarding uh, the availability of uh, vaccines. Uh, you know, uh, we have, or the world has seen the Ebola problem in Africa uh, for several years, but, you know, there was, they, they, they still no vaccine for that. Um, I don't know, I, I think, uh, you see, when countries like uh, uh, the big, big countries, the, the G10 countries like uh, America and uh, Germany and uh, Japan, they are affected, then they put, they, they pour money into this kind of research. But, you know, uh, how, how many lives were lost uh, due to Ebola in, in Africa? Uh, but there was no concerted effort uh, to developing uh, such, such um, uh, vaccines or cures. And uh, maybe one of the, the things that we see as well, it's also to do with malaria. Uh, uh, I know that there have been a lot of money spent in research on malaria, but it is for the for the good of the people who are who are the researchers who are in the uh, you know in the Western and advanced countries, the first world countries. 
Um, but they, uh, the, the third world countries where the, the, there is the real problem have not been benefited much from, from their research. You see, they're, they're still waiting and they're still coping with this. Uh, so it's, it's, it's slow. Uh, but as I said, uh, uh, and, and sometimes when we talk about money into research, you know, we have this problem where uh, our young researchers are speaking to us. Uh, they're saying that, oh, they, they don't have money for this maintenance of the equipment. Uh, the bios, uh, biosafety cabinets, they, they can't pay for its maintenance and things like that. Uh, and then, you know, they, they even speak of uh, them spending their own money from their own pockets, you know, uh, where, where they can, you know, uh, for consumables, you know, they, they, they pay their own money. And I hope that this doesn't kill off research, you know, uh, research is very important, as you say, um, you know, that uh, we hope that, uh, you know, that the country goes through a, 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 a good uh, uh, period where, you know, money is invested back into research because we need it one, one day, you know. Uh, and sometimes this is something, the bin about um, fundamental research. Uh, people don't see any good in that. They expect, you know, they put money in and after five or ten years, they want to see a product uh, which doesn't happen immediately. Um, that's something, a little comments that I have. Thank you. I'm glad you mentioned that because there's always a, a constant tension between fundamental research and applied research. I've always been an applied researcher in my life, but I've respected uh, all the fundamental researchers because it, they are the ones who get the Nobel Prize. The public health people don't get Nobel Prizes. You know, it's the, the fundamental researchers who, do, who, who have breakthroughs in uh, developments and sciences, they, they, they get the Nobel Prize and they get all the uh, accolades. The public health people in veterinary public health, uh, in human public health, of course, agriculture, those who do a wide range of uh, research are often not, uh, don't go recognized. So again, the constant tension uh, between fundamental research and applied research is, is brought forward in this, uh, in this seminar uh, very beautifully, you know. Uh, as, as an academic, uh, uh, you know, uh, I also am concerned about resource. Resource, how do we allocate resources uh, when it comes to an institution? I always think about those issues, equity issues. Any other comments, uh, anybody? Dr. Subhash, uh, any, anything yeah, you want uh, to add? I think we have many biotechnology students. I think I will give the opportunity for students to ask questions. We have many biotechnology students and uh, I mean, uh, 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 participants in the virtual room. I think uh, uh, we can open, you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question. Uh, uh, I mean, all the students or part any, any participant, feel free to take this opportunity to clarify your doubts. That is the purpose to uh, understand more about biosafety and biosecurity and uh, uh, demystify, I mean, what you don't know or uh, to learn more about biosafety and biosecurity. So students, uh, uh, ball is in your court. While, while waiting for students, uh, Dr. Mustafa, maybe I will ask you uh, one question because, uh, because, because all these uh, young students, they are the future. So they should be well-trained for biosafety and biosecurity because of the climate change, as well as deforestation, as well as uh, biodiversity loss. So new and new outbreaks and pandemics are, I mean, uh, if there are in the future, it will not be surprising because we are damaging the ecosystem, forest and uh, uh, the natural, uh, natural resources. So uh, how we can uh, uh, prepare these uh, youngsters to face the future challenges? Because uh, I was thinking they will ask some question, but uh, they are keeping quiet. So how they can survive in the future uh, I mean, maybe you can just comment, you know. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I, I think I have this problem with my students as well. Uh, they, they're not brave enough to speak. But anyway, um, for our future researchers, I think the country and the world needs you. Uh, mm. You know, um, um, 
you spend uh, how many years of your life here and and you you know you can't expect uh, the best of both worlds uh, you um, in order to do research I think there's a certain degree of uh, sacrifice that needs to be made you see your friends driving Porsche cars and you know uh, and um, uh, you're uh, slaving yourself in the labs you know spending up to two or three o'clock in the in, in the morning uh, uh, dealing with data you know doing your experiments uh, and things like that um, but I, I think uh, in the long run there's a certain amount of satisfaction and don't think that uh, researchers uh, cannot cannot have the world uh, I have seen uh, I was working in one lab uh, in Cardiff when I went for my sabbatical. Um, my uh, the head of that lab was driving a Porsche, uh, which uh, not many researchers in Malaysia are doing. Uh, and you know, um, uh, uh, if uh, fate and luck comes your way, and you you know you are able to 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 gain uh, the material things of this world from your research, well and good. But at least you have the satisfaction of doing something and improving the world uh, through your research. Uh, that's my only uh, and and bi biotech. I, I think biotechnology is something that is growing uh, at a very fast pace. Uh, I didn't I didn't know about CRISPR when I started my PhD. Uh, now it's a common thing. Everybody is doing things about CRISPR uh, and things like that. Uh, so carry on. It's a, an exciting time to be in research. Uh, only uh, that sometimes we have to make the sacrifices and I hope uh, you are all brave enough to jump into that uh, and say okay I'm, I'll do it I'll do it uh, for my for my people and for my country and the whole world thank you yeah, that's an excellent summary and motivation talk dr Mustafa I think you summarized it very well I'm not going to say anything on that because you have said it really very well I think when it comes to sacrifice, each of us can have our small satisfactions, you know, what we have contributed to the world. When we leave this, I've reached a point in life and I want to just contribute because, you know, um, and then you can be satisfied that the very small, small things you have contributed in your own fashion. So research is one such area where you can definitely contribute. And, uh, you know, and, and we build building blocks. We build a better future for the next generation. We add... To the, to the frontiers of knowledge, and then our juniors will come and add some more. So our, our duty as academics is to challenge them, is to encourage them and motivate them to cross uh, uh, boundaries and frontiers, especially in intersectoral areas. And by, as you rightly said, biotechnology is an amazing science. I've lost track of all the terminologies um, from your presentation. I just copied and learned some new technology, some new words, but you know, it's an exploding field. Any other comments? We have had a wonderful time, actually. You know, so it goes to show how big, how much we have to learn in life. You know, how much there's so much for youngsters. Even if you all have a very narrow topic in your research, as part of your undergrad or postgrad research, you must realize that the field is very wide. So you must try to learn all aspects of the field some entomology, some vaccine work, some laboratory work, some safety issues, some administration, some finance, you know, how to, how to be cost effective. So learn many skills while you are doing the research. You know, biotechnology is uh, it's a growing field and Malaysia is one of the priority sectors. Any other comments? Maybe uh, maybe I'll just ask one question to Adil. So uh, because in developing the uh, workforce for one health security, so uh, I mean, uh, uh, how is the trend in Libya, uh, Dr. Adil? Uh, I mean, students are passionate to come in this field, or uh, I mean, uh, how is the situation in uh, Libya? Um, in which situation? That is in one health situation or the. Situation the, the situation the situation means a uh, number of students are being trained to come in this bisafety and bisecurity professional uh, uh, and uh, I mean develop the workforce for the uh, I mean uh, Libya you know 
so uh, how is the overall uh, situation of uh, total workforce available in libya for implementing the virus and virus virus and sorry virus safety and virus security for one health security oh yeah uh, as i said uh, the, the first priorities in in, in my in, in our work was the i think so i, I hit background sound is it from Go ahead. You're clear now, I think. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, we first we first uh, prioritize our work on the academia and the, and the universities where the where the all the sectors are there, um, and we focused on training the um, the academic uh, staff, uh, which includes the student well, at first the lecturers or professors and researchers. Um, uh, TAs and uh, and uh, university students and and in 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 in, in each uh, level or in, in, in every uh, whether it's like undergrad or grad uh, level. And after the uh, after uh, we had a quite um, uh, a big uh, uh, big number of uh, trainees uh, around the country and also during the. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, we had lots of training programs, virtual training program via Zoom applications and Google applications. And uh, we still uh, on, 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 on other programs, ongoing other programs on the biosafety and biosecurity and certain, uh, in, 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 uh, in certain uh, uh, fields um, uh, uh, related to uh, COVID-19. Um, uh, and then also, uh, we uh, we had we have like a basic data, database on uh, training programs and certain levels and also accreditation and certification of the uh, of the uh, training programs for uh, individuals either as like students or also we focus on the on the health and the health organizations and the Ministry of Health for training and uh, preparing uh, staff uh, are aware of the basic terms of biosecurity and biosafety in their, uh, in their uh, workplaces. I hope this is answering your question, Dr. Shubash. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Adil. Any so, other over questions? to you, sir. Yeah, any other questions or comments? It's been a wonderful two hours, so we are still excited and willing to listen for a few more minutes if any of you ask questions. The speakers seem very motivated. They are still smiling. So I guess uh, they want to motivate us and provide us with more information. Any other questions, comments? So it has really opened my mind as a lay uh, person from another discipline to show how important this discipline is. Okay, so the, first of all, we realize how important it is. The next thing is how do we share our resources, share our knowledge, and this is one such opportunity. Sharing resources also comes through, you know, exchange of information, uh, discussing openly with colleagues. And I often say that if two academics come together, they can always think of some research projects. So always have this open mind of discussing with your, with your peers, with your seniors, with your juniors, and all, everybody will give you more ideas in the field on how to improve your research per se and your perspectives and, uh, and so on and so forth. Any other comments? The speakers, the final, I'll give you the final chance to say a few lines if you want. You have been wonderful speakers, so thank you very much. Uh, don't feel uh, shy. Uh, again, I would like to thank uh, 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 Prof. Uh, Krishnan uh, for being a wonderful host uh, and also to uh, uh, Ames. Uh, for inviting uh, me to, to speak uh, on something that uh, I hold dear to my heart. Uh, and also to everyone uh, who is in this room, uh, thank you very much for actually attending and uh, lending your ears. Um, and I hope uh, that we can continue to collaborate uh, in the future uh, on things that uh, are of common interest to us. Thank you. Dr. Adel? Um, thanks again to um, to Dr. Kress, Dr. Shubash, and Dr. Mustafa for the uh, for the valuable information that you have presented today. 
and uh, thank you for the um, fruitful uh, discussion here. Actually, uh, in my personal view, I've learned many things today, and I gained my knowledge from Dr. Mustafa on the on the entomology things. And uh, Dr. Um, uh, Chris, it's a very nice moderation and uh, very uh, uh, very fruitful talk. And uh, although you are challenged the Malaysian uh, students, but they are not they are not uh, they are not uh, challenge you back. But hopefully in the future they will do. And uh, uh, extended uh, uh, thanks to Dr. Shubash for the um, for the uh, connection and the contact and the collaboration and for accepting my or for inviting me. And thank you all for having me today. It's my pleasure to, to, to be with you and hoping to extend my work and collaboration in the future. Although it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's already 5 a.m., 6 a.m. here in Libya, but I'm very active and uh, you, 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 I think you shot my adrenaline in my body so I cannot go back and sleep again. So uh, thank you again and <laughs> appreciate your time. Thank you uh, all. Thank you, the speakers. Thank you to the listeners. Uh, I said, I think I've said my piece. And I once again wish all of you the very best. Over to you, Dr. Subash. Yeah, uh, over to, uh, back to MC, uh, Fazla, please. Mm. Dr. Mustafa, Dr. Adam Mohammed, thank you very much for your wonderful talk. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and experience with us in this webinar. And thank you, Senior Professor Dr. Krishnan Rajam, for moderating this session. It was a very great session today. And on behalf of the organizing team, we would like to thank all of you for attending the ninth web program of the Biosafety and Biosecurity Month, October 2020. Before I say goodbye for this session, we'd like to hear feedback from all the participants by scanning the code on the screen right now. We promise the evaluation survey would not take you more than one minute and your feedback will be greatly appreciated. You can either scan the QR code or go to the link in the shared in the chat box. After the completion of the survey, you would receive a <coughs> certificate within short time. And I will keep this slide running for about two minutes for you to scan the QR code. We will be looking forward to having all of you joining us again in the next webinar. We wish you a good health and safety, and I'll be back shortly. Thank you very, very much. I hope by now everyone had the chance to scan the QR code. So I'm going to end the meeting now. Stay safe and have a wonderful day. Hope to see you soon in our next webinar. And once again, thank you everybody.